Looking back through history, you can see the influence glass has had on the evolution of laboratory science. In ancient times, the pharmacists of Egypt stored their drugs in small vials of glass. Roman subjects in Phoenicia invented glass blowing, which enabled the mass production of glass objects that are ancestors to today's flasks and beakers. Although much has changed since physicians mixed drugs for the pharaohs, glass is still the material of choice in the chemistry laboratory. At Corning, we've learned much about glass since our founding in 1851. In this presentation, we'll share tips for working safely with laboratory glass and protecting it from damage. Before we review the safety tips, you should understand the differences between the two types of glass commonly used in laboratories, soda lime and borosilicate. Soda lime glass is used for microscope slides, cover slips, pasture pipettes, and other glass items not exposed to heating. Borosilicate is the preferred and most widely used glass for laboratory apparatus. The most widely known brand of borosilicate glass is Pyrex, which was introduced by Corning in 1915. Unlike soda lime, Pyrex glass can be safely heated and cooled from minus 230 degrees to 230 degrees Celsius, with extreme uses to nearly 490 degrees. Pyrex glass is also chemically durable, so it can be safely used to handle most chemicals. In addition, Pyrex glass has excellent optical clarity, which makes it ideal for graduated glassware. When glass is formed, the surface cools faster than the interior. This leaves the inside in a state of tension. In its natural, unflawed, pristine state, a formed piece of glass is actually stronger than granite or steel. When glass is tempered, the surface is deliberately cooled faster to make the skin tighter and the formed piece stronger. However, any flaw or scratch in the skin makes the tension inside more susceptible to breaking out. This is why window glass can be cut so neatly. For example, if you scribe a flaw and then apply pressure, the result is a nice straight break. The same principle applies to cutting glass rods or tubing. Before cutting glass, make sure to have the proper safety equipment, including eye protection. Make a cut in the glass with a single firm stroke using a glass cutter or sharp file. Moisten the file and deepen the cut a little. Pick up the rod with a gloved hand or wrapped in a towel. Place your thumbs opposite the cut. Hold the glass away from your body and press with your thumbs while pulling out and back with your hands. Finally, fire polish the cut ends to remove any sharp edges. Should you need to scratch a piece of glass to start crystallization, dispose of it in an appropriate container. Use of damaged glassware could result in breakage, personal injury, or loss of an important sample. Proper handling of glassware will prevent flaws that can jeopardize safety. Carefully inspect glassware for nicks and scratches before use. Remember, any type of stress on a flaw or scratch increases the likelihood of breakage. This includes vacuum, thermal shock, and internal or external pressure. Handle glassware gently and always lay it on a towel or protective mat. Metal or glass stirring rods can scratch glassware. Cover the tips with rubber or use PTFE rods instead. Clamps on laboratory apparatus can cause stress or abrasions to glassware. Avoid this by using coated clamps and use no more pressure than necessary. Distribute the weight and pressure evenly, tightening the assembly from the bottom up. Also, never hold a flask by the neck. Always hold it from the bottom, carrying only one flask at a time. Glass joints can occasionally freeze. Never loosen a frozen joint by using force, tools, or tapping it on a table. The correct way to loosen a joint is by immersing it in carbonated liquid, and then heating it with a low flame. The joint should be ready to gently pull apart within minutes. If it is still frozen, get help from your glass blower or dispose of the piece. PTFE stopcocks are an excellent alternative. They are contamination free and rarely freeze up. If a PTFE stopcock should freeze, cool it to contract the materials. You should soon be able to safely loosen the plug. To loosen the top of a frozen desiccator, 
follow these steps. First, release any vacuum. Next, gently warm the frozen surface and carefully slide the top away from you. Never pry or pull. A word of caution though, not all desiccators are made from heat-resistant silicate glass. If using hot samples, make sure your desiccator is made from a borosilicate glass like Corning Pyrex brand. Be careful when inserting glass tubing into a rubber stopper. Make sure the end has been fire polished. Use glycerin or water to lubricate the glass. Then, gently ease it through the stopper using a gloved hand or towel. Use similar care when inserting a pipette into a pipette head device. To avoid potential spills, use cylinders with a hex-shaped base. They are hard to tip and won't easily roll off a bench top. If breakage is a concern, consider using Pyrex Plus Labware. It can help prevent spills and splattering if glassware is accidentally broken. It also offers the chemical durability of Pyrex borosilicate glass inside, plus a protective coating outside to contain spills. Rapid changes in temperature can temporarily induce stress in glass. Here are a few things you should remember when heating and cooling glass. Never place hot glassware on a cold surface. Never place cold glass on a hot surface. Even heat-resistant borosilicate glass can be vulnerable to thermal shock when temperature changes aren't gradual. Also, remember to always heat glass gently. The flame should touch below the liquid level. Rotate or gently mix the solution to prevent concentrated heat buildup. Use a soft burner flame, a ceramic-centered wire gauze heat distributor, or a ceramic top hot plate. When using a stirrer hot plate, use PTFE coated magnetic bars to eliminate the possibility of scratching the glass while stirring. Heat only beakers and Erlenmeyer flasks on a hot plate. Never heat media bottles or jars. If liquids spill while using a ceramic stirrer hot plate, clean immediately using a non-abrasive cleanser. If the ceramic top has lost its gloss, it is etched and should be replaced. When cleaning laboratory glass, use a plastic or wooden cleaning brush. Brushes with exposed wire should be avoided. After washing and proper rinsing, use wooden-ended or plastic-coated racks for drying. When you store glass, use drawer or shelf padding to minimize abrasion and glass-to-glass -glass contact. Labware such as stopcocks should be stored in a loosened state. Inserting a thin piece of paper in a joint will eliminate sticking during storage. Also remember to close drawers gently. If you discover clouded glass, it has come under chemical attack and should be disposed of. Special and separate containers should be provided for the disposal of flawed, broken, chemically, biologically, or radioactively contaminated glassware. Also use care when mixing chemicals. Some combinations can cause heat-generated reactions. Reusable plastic is an alternative to glassware when working with strong acids and bases. Make sure the polymer is compatible with the chemicals you're using. Corning's line of reusable plastic includes PP, PMP, and PFA polymers. To conclude, let's summarize the important safety practices. Always wear proper safety equipment and eye protection. Carefully inspect all glassware for nicks or scratches. Use PTFE or rubber-coated stirring rods. Never hold a glass by the neck. Hold it from the bottom. Never force a frozen glass joint or desiccator cover. Warm and gently loosen. Exercise care when inserting glass tubing or rods into a rubber stopper. Use similar care when inserting a glass pipette into a pipetting device. Never place hot glass on a cold surface or cold glass on a hot surface. Always heat glass evenly. Minimize glass-to-glass -glass contact during storage. Dispose of flawed or broken glass properly. We hope this presentation is helpful in making your work productive and above all safe. For more information, request the Corning Glassware Catalog from your Corning representative or visit our website.